Welcome everybody to the Sacred Heart Baseball Coaches Show with the head coach of the Pioneers, Nick Chiaquino. And uh, coach, uh, before we look forward to the final regular season series of the year at Central, let's go back to the Wagner series, which was dramatic, thrilling, gut-wrenching at times, I'm sure, frustrating, but at the end, it ended up being an incredible 20-inning day of baseball on Sunday after a couple of frustrating days, Friday and Saturday. How important was it to, to, to come out with the final two victories of the year after uh, the way it started? Oh, it, it was very important. We could have put ourselves in a hole. Instead, we, we put ourselves in very good position to get a conference bid this weekend. So you, you get into that game three of the of the uh, four-game weekend set, and you're in the sixth inning of a seven-inning game. It's 4 nothing Wagner, and it's looking like Seahawks are maybe going to take the first three or four, really put the pressure on you in that game four. And then you catch a break, an error, and you get on the board after a couple of hits. But then the, the, the swing of the season for me is Victor Sorrento's two-run bomb. I mean, it, that was like a yeah. big league blast to deep left center field. And the way you guys came out of the dugout, the way we watched it as we were calling it, it just seemed like there was a huge collective team sigh of relief and that there was some pressure alleviated, and then the boys started having fun and carried it into game four. How, how was it in the dugout? For yeah, it, exactly, exactly. I mean, we, we didn't have much to show offensively the first, the first day, or first two games, and even through most of the third game. So to finally get on the board, you know, it, you know, you know we know we're a good team. We know we can score runs, uh, but when you have a dry spell, you know, sometimes there becomes a little bit of a doubt, a little lack of confidence. But uh, for us to do that in that situation was just a, a, a growing moment, really, for the team. The whole weekend was it uh, took us to another level uh, because every year, you know, it comes down to the last two weekends. Yeah. And we started the last two weekends with two losses. And uh, let's see how we finish. All right. Um, you know, a lot of little things go into giving you the opportunity to come back. We just talk about a couple of those little things, namely, I thought that play Ted Shaw made going into the hole, diving stop, 3-2 pitch, two outs, everybody's going, no place to put him, and he makes a sensational play and gives you the opportunity to come back. How much of a lift did that play give you guys? That, that, was, that was great. Ted uh, had a, a very good year uh, defensively, and especially, particularly early. Uh, and then towards the middle part of the season, he wasn't as sharp. He, he had an injury, um, a, a leg injury, which has kind of hampered him. But this weekend, he looked like he was back to his norm, you know, his self, his normal self. So you mentioned pitching and defense. There was pitching and defense on one play that stands out for me again as what I think was one of the plays of the year was yeah, Dan Wirtz. Dan Wirtz coming yeah. off the mound and that no do or die, pick it up with a bare hand shovel. Jake Fryer, the freshman, comes into the game yeah. and has a collision at the plate, a hard slide. The plate hangs onto yeah. the ball. I mean, that was a, a real thrilling play, too. It was, and uh, it's nice to see the things you work on in practice. Uh, you know, they come up once in a while throughout the course of the season, but it's nice to see that if you work on them on a regular basis, you're able to execute. And I'll tell you, that is, that's a play where a lot of guys won't make that play. You know, and we had two guys that executed it perfectly. We saw a couple of strange things, the 5-3 at third base, too, with Victor yeah. Sorrento, the first baseman, covering third. And man, this day uh, had everything, including a, a, an unbelievable pitching performance, I thought, from James Cooksey. Seven and two-thirds innings, that's a good day for a starter. No yeah. earned runs, seven and yeah. two-thirds, yeah. wins two ball games in one day. I, I would imagine that's a rarity in the many years you've coached here. I don't know how many guys have won two games in one day and did it with four perfect innings in game two out of the bullpen. Yeah, uh, Cooksey's been tremendous. And you add on last weekend, he had two saves. So he gets two saves last weekend against Bryant. He gets two wins this weekend against against Wagner. Uh, he's been a, a steady, steady, steady player for us these last two years. You know, particularly this year, he's been, he's been lights out. He has a ton of confidence. Uh, he attacks the strike zone. And it, it's just a, a treat for the guys to play behind him. And also to watch. So another guy that's been fun to watch, and you, and you had a non-league game this past week at Quinnipiac, uh, your final non-league contest to get you ready for four big ones in New Britain. Zach Short, another three hits, had a, was knocking the ball all over the park on Staten Island against Wagner. Uh, you told me, I remember 
in the off season, you're like, oh man, we, we got some we got some guys coming in. You're gonna love this kid, Zach Short. Yeah. And man, I mean, you have to the way he plays the game and the way he he sprays it to all fields. I mean, you can't in this day of shifts, you can't shift this guy. No. I mean, he he no. hits pitches in, hits pitches out, and he plays with so much energy. And what a lift I, I imagine he's giving you up the middle. Yeah, Zach is, has been tremendous. You know, we we were a little panicked. Uh, Having Murph there for four years, yeah. holding down the four. It was pretty good. You know, we're talking about a sixth round draft pick with the yeah. Yankees. Uh, says, how are we gonna how are we gonna replace him? Uh, we can't really replace him, but defensively, Shorty's been been tremendous. He's been very good at the plate, very good at the plate, uh, and he just brings a ton of en energy, experience, knowledge. He's the guy that's out. He's the quarterback. You know, he knows the game. He knows what has to happen. He, he makes all the plays. Uh, anything you throw at him, he's he's ready to react to. So it's great having a guy like that as your leader in the infield. Uh, and then, but you know, just to spin off of that, you add Jesus and Ted and Victor's been playing tremendous defense. Mm -hmm. uh, we've we've been pretty solid defensively. And if you really look at it, that could be the difference between the two wins and the two losses. Yeah. Our defense compared to theirs. Yep, and uh, that's. Every game is big. Those ones were big. And uh, I know we were joking in the office uh, last week. Well, last weekend was a big weekend. Yeah. This week it's a big weekend. <laughs> this week it's a big That's weekend. Right. And then next weekend's a really big weekend. But That's to get right. there, you got to get through this big weekend yes. in New Britain against Central. So uh, your thoughts on that series and where the team is going into playing a Blue Devils team that took three of four from LIU Brooklyn and is having a really good year. Yes, uh, Central can really pitch it and uh, they're coming up with their clutch hits and they are one of the top defensive teams also so they they're going on all cylinders right now uh it's a solid team talented team so it's going to be another gut-wrenching weekend and uh it's an opportunity for us to show some more growth because you know you look at us we're, we're pretty we're pretty young now we're fortunate to have the veterans on the mound and behind the plate with Derek uh, but otherwise, we're pretty darn young and inexperienced. So it's it's just uh, exciting for the, see if these new guys, see if our young guys, can step up and take it to another level. It's amazing that as you go into the last weekend of the year, there's so many different scenarios that can play out depending on how one team does against another. Um, I just wonder, is it tempting for you to take a look at the standings, or do you just try to get these guys to focus on the one pitch at a time, one game at a time mentality? Uh, yes. <laughs> you look at the standings, you know, and you figure out the scenarios, but then you understand and uh, hopefully the players understand that uh, the main focus has to be on our process and uh, what, I, what I tell them about the, this end of the season where really this is, this is kind of like a playoff, it's either win or go home. Um, so it, it's the same but it's different. It's the same in the fact that we want to play one pitch at a time that we want to uh, just focus on the process, uh, but now the outcome is is looming up there. You know, it's a little closer. Yeah. So you have to probably take a few extra deep breaths and prepare mentally a little bit differently. You know, as far as understand the situations you're going to be in, because even last weekend, you know, you, you know, some guys got a little tighter, some guys stay relaxed, and it's about having the whole group really be relaxed, focused, locked in, and confident. And um, I think that's what we've done the past five years, you know, and if can we do it again this year? It's, it's every year's different. Well, you certainly did it Sunday. We'll see if we can roll that into four games at Central Connecticut this week. Absolutely. All right, thanks a lot for the time, Coach. Looking forward to it. You're welcome. Nick Thank Giaquino, you. as always, with us on the Coach's Show here for Sacred Heart Baseball. So four big ones. In-state rivalry, conference rivalry, positioning in the NEC tournament on the line, Central Connecticut and Sacred Heart. We have the call for you all weekend beginning Thursday at 1, double dip Friday at 1, and the regular season finale at 3, all on the Pioneer Sports Network.